Hello there, and welcome to Andre's YouTube vlog for August 6, 2012. Now, I'm not sure if any of you out there are aware what special day it is, but it's a very special one, and a very controversial one. This is the 67th anniversary of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and um, a few days from now of the city of Nagasaki at the end of the Second World War. Now, um, I want to send all my hopes and sympathies to the surviving uh, Hibaksha, the Japanese term for survivors of the A-bomb. And also, last year I talked about folding paper cranes in tribute to uh, Sadako and uh, her quest in the 1950s to do the same thing um, in order to recover from the leukemia she got from exposure to radiation from the bomb. But this year, uh, considering my last vlog's emphasis on local heroes, I wanted to talk about a world hero, somebody who I've come to admire very much recently. What would you say about a physician who has taken the Hippocratic Oath for the whole planet and vowed not to die until nuclear weapons are abolished from the planet? Would you call them ambitious, noble, or right off the wall. That was the words of the niece of this lady, name of Anne Bernowski, about the subject of this vlog I'm making today. I want to talk to you about a lady named Dr. Helen Caldicott, a native of Melbourne, Australia. And by coincidence, her 74th birthday is going to be tomorrow. Happy birthday, Helen. I'm hoping your day tomorrow is as inspiring to you as the inspiration you've given to me and many around the world and in this United States alone. Um, in the late 70s, Helen Caldicott became uh, a pediatric um, teacher at Harvard University as well as working for the um, for different um, Boston hospitals and helping to run a cystic fibrosis clinic and devoting her life to the health and welfare of young people. Until 1980 when the Three Mile Island near nuclear meltdown occurred and she began to do research into the subject and found that even the Hershey Corporation were frightened that radioactive material would be getting into the milk from cows and groundwater and etc and pollute the atmosphere for the rest of eternity and the, and the uh, soil. Now, um, using her credibility as a physician, she became one of the presidents of the Once Dormant Physicians for Social Responsibility, an organization which began in the early 60s, but came back to life in the early 80s, in no small part thanks to Helen. Um, she made a documentary in 1982 called If You Love This Planet, where she, on film, did what she was famous for in the early 80s, writing books like Missile Envy, and describing to people everywhere the medical effects of nuclear war in a very honest but graphic enough way where it got attention. After the Berlin Wall came down, um, Helen and all of her fellow activists thought that, you know, the threat of nuclear war was over until she discovered in the mid-90s the weapons on Russia and America, the nuclear weapons, were still on hair trigger alert. They had not been removed. And after 9-11, that administration was doing research into building new nuclear weapons using depleted uranium weapons on Iraq during that war. And Helen's movement leapt back to life bigger than ever. People, I just wanted to tell you, all my life I have always been of the opinion that atomic power and atomic weapons are the biggest scientific developmental mistake that humanity has ever made. It has caused and it has the potential to cause nothing but misery and difficulty for the human race. We on this planet are powered by the control use of atomic power from our sun. Most stars utilize atomic power. Harnessed in that way it can create and regulate life. But we as human beings do not have the understanding to harness it productively and our current nuclear status is, as Helen Caldicott would put it, utterly insane. I fully support and approve of everything she's done and encourage it. 
Um, some people see her as a bit of a loud mouth, and that's why her niece, Anne Bernowski, made the film Helen's War in 2003, um, showcasing Helen Caldicott's revival of the anti-nuclear agenda with her book, The New Nuclear Danger, which did not get reviewed initially, which did not get promoted, but thanks to a crusade around the country uh, and developing new fundraising techniques, Helen was able to do it. And today, at 73, Helen Caldicott is still active, trying to get the agenda out there that nuclear energy is not a green and safe energy source that we can use sanely. That we need to not only stop the world from fighting and killing each other and developing a nuclear arms race again, but also that we need to find genuinely green sources that will not pollute the earth. Now, in the words of Helen's sister, my view on Helen Caldicott is that her sense of indignation and devotion to her cause is totally appropriate, and I admire it gravely. But it's hard to keep that kind of indignation for long, and most people don't want to talk about it. Even people who believe in these things tend to be numb to it. But I have learned numbness and pessimism are cop-outs. Um, learning about Helen Caldicott uh, and watching her on Helen's War and what she did helped me to realize that you know, my sense of indignation had been long buried and should come to the surface. Most of the vlogs I do on YouTube are inspired by Helen in some way. That's one of the reasons why my opinion is, have gotten a lot stronger and why I hold them. So I admire you, Helen, for changing the lives of people in the world and changing my life and helping me to gain new confidence in myself. And as you say, um, when a mother has a new baby, they often feel that they would die to protect that life. And it's a very profound revelation. And if women across the world, and men across the world, could harness that instinct that mothers have to protect their children, we may as a culture survive. So take care of yourself in Japan, in Australia, in America, any country in the world, and peace to all. See you next time.